got to gird up our loins and do this. We got to walk this out. Ah, Psalm 110. Give me 1927. This is Psalms 110. Read. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Until I make thy enemies thy footstool. Read. The Lord shall, shall send the rod of thy strength out of Zion. Rule thou in the midst of thine enemies. Uh -huh. Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power and the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning. Read. Thou hast the dew of thy youth. The Lord hath sworn and will not repent. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And this is dealing with Hamashiach and Hawashiach. This is what this is talking about. He's the man of war. He's the one that's going to rule with an iron rod. Read. The Lord at thy right hand shall strike through kings in the days of his wrath. He shall judge among the heathen. He shall fill the places with the dead bodies. See that? The Lord's not playing. He's coming back for vengeance to deal with his adversaries. For those who don't want to get down, they're going to lay down. Come. They don't want to serve the Lord. The Bible says he's going to deal with them accordingly. Read. He shall wound the heads over many countries. He shall drink of the brook in the way. Therefore shall he lift up the head. See that? The Lord is coming back for war. God. Okay? He's coming back to kill a lot of people. See, Christianity is teaching that God just loves everybody. That's not what the Bible says. God. The Bible says that he's coming back for vengeance. Get that Luke 19 and 27. And give me Ezekiel 25, 12 and 14. God. Luke 19 and 27. Bring it out. But those, but those mine enemies, which, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. You see that? Hamashiach and Habashai said, those my enemies, if they don't want to serve me, bring them hither and slay them. This is what he's going to say. When he returns, when he separates the wheat from the, uh, wheat from the chaff, the sheep from the goats, he says, bring my enemies here and slay them. See, the first time he came, he died on that cross for his children. But the second time he's coming back, he's coming back for blood. That's right. He's coming back for vengeance. For That's everything right. that uh, this wicked nation, these wicked nations have done to his children, including the two-thirds of our own people. Uh, because they want to follow the customs and the ideologies and the philosophies of this world. Uh, They're not willing to let go of the worldly matters. Uh, so the Lord said, bring them thither and slay them. That's what the Lord says. Get that in Ezekiel. Right? This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 25, verses 12 through 17. 12 through 14. 12 through 14. Sorry. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them, therefore thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom, and will cut off man and beast from it. See, this don't sound like a, a, a God just all about uh, butterflies and rainbows and unicorns and lollipops. That's right. No, That's the right. Lord is saying he's coming back to deal with his adversaries. That's right. And Edom, he's going to stretch out his hand against, he says. Read. And I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. What the Lord said? And I will make it desolate from Teman, and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. He's going to make them fall by the sword, the Bible says, right? That's right. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. By who? By the hand of my people Israel. You see that? The Lord is going to give his children the power to execute his vengeance. That's right. This is what thus saith the Lord. In that day, the day of the Lord, he said he's going to give power to his children. That's right. The Israelites. God. When he says bring them thither and slay them, he's not playing. That's right. He's going to give us the power to slay his adversaries. God. The people that put their hands on us. Read. And they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. Uh -huh. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. What the Lord said? And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. He said in that day they're going to know. They're going to know his vengeance. Okay. Uh -huh. that, he's a, that he is a man of war, just like he says. They're going to know his vengeance. Give me That's Jeremiah 51, 20 through 25. You give me Jeremiah 16, 16. The Lord is coming back for vengeance. He is a man of war. 
So he's telling us that we have to be prepared. We have to walk this thing out like soldiers, okay? Uh, we got to understand, quit holding hands with your oppressor because the Lord is going to deal with them accordingly. He's going to slay his, uh, uh, our oppressors, the Bible says. The adversaries of God, our adversaries. Read. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, 21 through 24. 20 through 25. 20 through 25. Uh -huh. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. What the Lord say? Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. See that? He's telling Israel, he says that we are his battle axe and weapons of war. See, he's going to give us the authority to execute vengeance on his behalf. Read. For with thee will I break in pieces the nations, and will, and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. See that? He says that we're going to break in pieces the nations, these nations, God. okay? And break in pieces these kingdoms. That's right. Okay, read. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with thee will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. And this is dealing with all uh, uh, the helicopters, the fighter jets, the tanks, all this stuff. The Lord said he's going to break in pieces all their all their military might. He's going to give us the power to do so, read. And with and with thee will I make, will I break in pieces old and young. Uh -huh. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and the Made. You see that? He said he ain't sparing nobody out of his adversaries. God. He's going to deal with all of them. Okay, read. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock, and with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and, and his yoke of oxen. And this is dealing with these wicked pastors that are supposed to be feeding the flock of God, God. but they're, they're leading them astray, teaching them that they don't have to keep the laws of God. And that it's all equality. Just hold hands with anybody. The Lord said he's going to break in pieces. That's the two-thirds club right there, Reed. That's right. And with thee will I break in pieces captains and rulers. Uh-huh. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. And this is dealing with the Edomites. He said he's going to deal with Babylon, America, accordingly. His, his judgment is coming. He's going to be furious. He's going to execute this vengeance. This is what he's saying. We are his battle axes. We are his soldiers. Okay? Wow. So we got to be men. We got to gird up ourselves. Otherwise, we are going to be part of that destruction. Read. Wow. That was it. Okay, yeah. Give me Jeremiah 16, 16. Off. And then give me Joel 3, 9 and 10. Um, Jeremiah 16 and 16. Read. Behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord. And they shall fish them, and after will I send for many hunters. Read that again, Aubrey. Behold, I will send for many fishers. We're fishing right now. Yahawashai said, go be fishers of men. That's what we're doing right now. We're trying to reel the people in, compel them to come back to the marriage, to draw back to the Lord, to turn from their wicked ways and repent and be converted. This is what we're doing now. All the mighty men of the Lord coming out on these corners trying to fish them in. But the Lord said there's going to come a time, read. Saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. Uh-huh. And after will I send for many hunters. But after that, after we are fishing, he said he's going to send hunters. Uh -huh. He's going to send hunters. And we know what hunters do. They kill. Okay. The Lord said now is the time that we're fishing. But there will come a time where he's going to give the authority to his children to be hunters. Read. Right. And they shall hunt them from every mountain uh -huh. and from every hill. And this is dealing with nations and kingdoms. Read. And out of the holes of the rocks. And out of the holes of the rocks. They ain't going to be able to hide. All their, uh, 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 what do they call those things? Them bunkers? bunkers. They're not going to be able to hide in those bunkers when Yahawashai returns. They're going to try, but he says the hunters are going to find them. That's he's going to give us those powers to do so. We're going to have special powers that the Lord is going to give his children. We are going to be his battle axes. That's right. Okay. And he's going to deal with these people as he says. His fury is going to be poured upon them. Okay. Joel 3, 9 and 10. This is the book of Joel, chapter 3, verses 9 through 10. Matthew, chapter 10, 34. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. What did the Lord say? Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. He said, proclaim this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. He's saying, get ready, because it's coming. Read. Wake up, the mighty men. 
Let all the men of war draw near. Uh -huh. Let them come up. Uh -huh. Beat your beat your plow beat your plowshares uh -huh. into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. That's right. Let the weak say, I am strong. Uh -huh. That's it. He said, let the weak say, I am strong. Uh -huh. He said, we got to turn this, this captivity into mighty men of war. That's right. That's what we're going to become. He's going to give us the authority to become mighty men. Uh -huh. So we got to gird up our loins, Yasharala. Okay? We got to uh -huh. start applying these laws these statutes and commandments and take up our cross and follow the Messiah. That's right. Hamashiach Yehoshai, Matthew 10 and 34. Matthew 10 and 34. Huh. Think not that I have come to send peace on earth. Yehoshai said, don't think that I've come to send peace on earth. Huh. You see, this is what the world is promoting, projecting. All that false propaganda, okay? They're, they're, they're saying that the Lord is just all love and peace. Yehoshai said, think not that I come to send peace on earth. Read. Right. I came not to send peace, but a sword. But a what? But a sword. But a sword. And we know what a sword is used for. That's for right. killing. Read. For I am. No, that's it on that. Give me 1 John 2, 15 and 16. Uh, 1 John 2, 15 and 16. So the Lord said, think not that he came to send peace on earth, but a sword. But a sword. Okay. He's going he's gonna to separate the wheat from the chaff and the sheep from the goat. Best believe. This is the book of 1 John, chapter 2, verses 15 and 16. Come on. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. The Lord said, don't love this world, nor the things of this world, because the peace is not going to lie in this place. Fire and judgment is coming to this world. That's right. Okay? The Lord's peace isn't in this world. This is why he said, think not. So if you are loving this world, you are gonna, you're going to get the havoc of the Lord. Read if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You see that? If you're loving the things of this world, he says that you don't have the love of the Father in you. Okay? We can't sit there and say that we love money and, 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 and women and houses and cars and the things of this world, pride and power, and say that we have a relationship with God. Ah. The Bible says if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Read for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Of the world. He said the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, pride of life is of the is of the world. God. Okay? So if we're living that way, we're, we're not going to have the peace of the Lord. Okay? We're going to get that destruction, and we don't want that. We want to be delivered. We don't want to be part of that two-thirds. Get that real quick God. in Zechariah 13 and 8. Give me Proverbs 3 and 31. We gotta, we gotta let go of these things, Joshua. We gotta quit holding hands with our oppressor. Quit holding hands with the things that are gonna destroy us. Okay? Our people gotta wake up and realize that the Lord isn't dealing with everybody. Okay? He's not for everybody. He's not for everything. This is the book of Zechariah, chapter 13, of verse 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. You see that? That's the majority. That's 66.6%. .6%. He uh, said two-thirds are going to be cut off and die and de get destroyed. Uh, you see that? That's why he says, I didn't come to bring peace, but I came to bring a sword. Uh, judgment is coming to this place. Fiery judgment. Read. But the third shall be left therein. But the third shall be left therein. Now give me uh, Isaiah 66. Uh, start at verse 15. Give me Proverbs 3 and 31 real quick. Proverbs 3 and 31. Read. Envy thou not the oppressor. The Lord said, envy thou not the oppressor. Which means don't want to be like them, don't want nothing to do with them. Read. And choose none of his ways. And choose none of his ways. You see that? That's the love of the world. Okay? The world is going to teach you to do the things that they like, that uh. they want. But the Lord said, envy thou not, because if you are envying these things and choosing their ways, you're going to die with them. Uh, and this ain't what I'm saying. This is what the Lord is saying. Okay? Get that real quick. Isaiah 66, 15. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind. See that? The Lord said he's coming with fire, with his chariots like a whirlwind. Read to render his anger with fury 
and his rebuke with flames of fire. Now that doesn't sound like that's going to be a pleasant day for a lot of people. Uh -huh. He says that's destruction. Uh -huh. That's a day of death for a lot of people. Read. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh. Uh -huh. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. Shall be many, the Bible says. Yes. You see that? This is why Yahabashai said narrow is the gate. Narrow is the way that leads to life. And broad is the way that leads to, dis to destruction. Uh -huh. That's loving the world and the things of the world. Keep reading. Uh, they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination and the mouse. You see that now? That's dealing with idolatry. The green trees hiding behind those idols, these churches, okay? And eating swine's flesh, not willing to get do away with the abomination. The Lord said these are abominable abominable things. God. And those who are doing these things, they're going to get that destruction. Read. Shall be consumed together, the Lord, says the Lord. The Lord said they're going to be consumed. The Lord said they're going to be consumed. Consumed. How are they going to be consumed? By that fire. That's right. That fire that's coming. That's how they're going to get consumed. They're going to be destroyed. Read. For I know their works and their thoughts. Uh -huh. They shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall come and see my glory. They're going to see. Everyone's going to see in that day. That's why it says, every eye shall see, and every knee shall bow, and every tongue shall confess. Uh, when they uh, see that judgment comes, everyone's going to know what time it is then. That's okay? Right. But we don't want to wait till that day, because then it's going to be too late. We got to be ready in season and out of season. Okay? Uh, we got to put on that armor of light, the armor of God, and be ready. Uh, we got to be soldiers. We got to gird up ourselves like men and do the work of the Lord and to not fear their faces. Uh, okay, this is what the Lord is commanding us to do because he's coming with his angels and with fire. Okay, to deliver those who are faithful and to destroy those that are not. Uh, okay, give me uh, Isaiah 28, 15. And give me Deuteronomy 28, 65 through 68. Uh, Isaiah 28 and 15. Uh, because ye have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell, are we at agreement? You see that? People are making a covenant with death and with hell. By holding on to their oppressor in the ways of this world, the Lord says you're making a covenant with death. You see, we're supposed to be in covenant with the Most High God and His Son. He said He chose us to be His children above all people that are upon the face of the earth. He says, can two walk together except they be agreed? We got to be in agreement with him. But the Lord is telling us through Isaiah here, he's saying, but the people are making a covenant with death and with hell. They're choosing death over life. Okay? You know, they, they might not get it right now, but they're going to get it on that day of judgment. This is what, get that real quick and uh, hold that real quick, Deuteronomy 28, but give me Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, finish that up. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. Read from the top one more time. Because ye have said we have made a covenant with death and with hell, are we at agreement? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us, for we have made lies our refuge. You see that? Made lies our refuge, the Bible says. See, they're, they're, they're in denial about what's coming. They don't think that scourge is going to come to them. They think it's going to just pass them up. Uh, yeah. Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 8 and 11. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Read. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. You see that? Uh, sentence isn't executed speedily. Because sentence isn't executed speedily. This is what Isaiah is saying in Isaiah 28, 15. That they think because the, they're not getting judged right now that the scourge is just going to pass over them. Read. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. And because they don't get judged right away, because punishment isn't coming at their front door every single day, it is set in their hearts to do wicked. Okay. Right. But the Lord is saying there's a day that's coming where judgment is going to happen. That's right. Okay. So we got to wake up and open up our spiritual eyes and realize that thus saith the Lord is true. That's right. Okay. And not be like these wicked people who say in their heart, judgment isn't coming. It's going to pass over. No. The Bible says that judgment is coming. Rest assured. Now give me Deuteronomy 28. 
68, 65 to 68, 65 to 68, and then Micah 2 and 10. This is... Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 65 through 68. Read. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. You see that? The Lord said, we're under these curses, okay? So we're not going to find no ease here. So we need to quit trying to make it in this life. Okay? We got to do the best we can and sustain ourselves, but we need to quit trying to make this life uh, our goal. Uh, we're seeking the kingdom to come. That's right. We can't love the things of the world. Even though we're here and we have to live to the best of our ability, the Bible says don't love this place and don't love the things of it. Read. But the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart. And that's what we have here, a trembling heart. Every time we turn on the news, another brother's getting killed. We're the last hired first fire. We have no rest in this place. Read. And failing of eyes uh -huh. and sorrow of mind. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And that's what's been going on century after century, decade after decade, day after day, is that our life is hanging in doubt. Okay? Sorrow of mind, which means depressed. Our people are a depressed people. Okay? Stuck at the bottom, stuck in these ghettos. Okay? Because they're not willing to let go of the things of the world. They want to keep loving their oppressor, keep holding on to the things of this evil world. The Bible says we're not going to find rest here. This is not our rest, read. And thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have no sense of, it's like it, and shalt have no assurance of thy life. You see that? The Lord said, in this place, we're not going to have no assurance of life. God. Your bank account ain't going to save you. Your God. big house ain't going to save you. Your fancy car ain't going to save you. Your gang ain't going to save you. God. There is no assurance of life in this place, read. In the morning, thou shalt say, would God it were even. And at even, thou shalt say, what God, it were morning. In other words, he's saying, we can't wait till this time passes, okay? It's going to be so miserable in this place. He's saying that we can't wait till morning comes. And when it's morning, we can't wait till the night comes. Can we hurry up and get through this captivity, okay? We've been in seven different captivities in the history of the world, and we still haven't woke up. Um, we still walking around here like a bunch of fools, loving the world. Read. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Which thou shalt see. Because everywhere we look, we're getting gunned down, we're, we're stuck in the ghettos, we're always in the jails, okay? Everything that's happening to us is because our people aren't willing to repent and convert and turn back to the Lord. We got to come back to that agreement, that contract that he said. Drop that. Hey, give me Micah 2 and 10. Uh, Micah 2 and 10. We have to let go of that covenant of death, okay? That covenant with hell. The Lord says we got to come back to the covenant with him, to come back to the marriage. That's right. Okay? This is why we're out here week in, week out, to compel our brothers and sisters to draw back to the Lord. That's right. To come back to the fold. Come back to the marriage. Micah 2 and 10. Micah 2 and 10. Give me Proverbs 16 and 5. Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. What the Lord said? Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. The Lord said, Arise and depart. Depart from this place. Now we know we have to be here right now, but our mind doesn't have to be here. Our wow. spirit doesn't have to be with this place. That's right. Okay? That's why he said we must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's right. Though we are physically still in this captivity spiritually we can be in covenant with the lord That's right. this is why he said arise and depart for this is not our rest read because it is polluted it shall destroy you even with a sore destruction the lord said because this place is polluted and it will destroy you with a sore destruction why because that judgment is coming to this place uh -huh. okay it's like the bible says who will pity the snake charmer if you're playing with snakes and you get bit, it's your fault. Right. If you're playing with fire and you get burnt, it's your fault. This is what the Lord is telling us. He said, this place is going to be a sore destruction. Arise and depart from it, for this is not our rest. Right. Proverbs 16 and 5. Let me get this. this is the book of Proverbs, chapter 16 and verse 5. Three. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord said, those who are proud in heart are an abomination which means selfishness. If you're not willing to be submissive to the Lord, he said that's an abomination. Just like it says in uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 23. 
rebellion is the same as witchcraft, is the sin of witchcraft. Okay? So he said, pride is an abomination. In other words, if you're not submitting to the will of the Lord, you are an abomination. Read. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. You see that? He says, if you're not willing to let go of these ties to these people and to this world, he says, best believe you're still going to get punished. The wicked will get punished. You're not going to be able to save your oppressor no matter how much you like him. God. No matter how much you like her. The Lord says the wicked will go wicked will not go unpunished. So, lock it. Uh, so he starts it by saying pride is an abomination. Why is he saying that right before he says the wicked will not go unpunished? Because our people aren't willing to let go of them. Uh, uh, they're proud. They think they know better. They think their life is in their hands. That's right. When it's in the Lord's hands. Okay? Now give me Matthew 26. Matthew 26, 6 through 13. Now when Yahweh was in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, there came unto him a woman having an alabaster box of a very precious ointment, and poured it on his head as he sat at meat. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation, saying, To what purpose is this waste? For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. When Yahweh understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she hath wrought a good work upon me. For ye have the poor always with you, but me ye have not always. For in that she hath poured this ointment on my body, she did it for my burial. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. And with that, we like to give all glory, honor, and praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai, Kwam Yasharala, Kwam Yasharala.